Welcome to Worship with Ascension Lutheran Church in beautiful Nelson, BC. Today is January 29th and the fourth Sunday after Epiphany. Epiphany is a season of light where we let the light of Christ into our lives. And today we hear a little bit more of that in our lessons. In particular, our lesson from Micah speaks of doing justice, loving kindness, and walking humbly. And those are words that are echoed in the mission statement of Ascension Lutheran Church. Our service, in addition to those lessons, will have special music, hymns, prayers, and a sermon. And though some of us may be gathered in our church building and some of us are in our homes, we are all together in spirit. And we're really glad you're here with us today. child of God. We begin with a litany of thanks. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wellspring, you are the fire of rebirth. Amen. Glory to, glory to you for the oceans and lakes, for the rivers and streams, honor to you for the clouds and rain, for dew and snow. Your waters are below us, around us, above us. In the waters of baptism, our life is born in you. For the gift of baptism, we give you thanks. Praise to you for your saving word. By your word, you spoke light into darkness. Call forth beauty from chaos and brought life into being. For the gift of your word, we give you thanks. Praise to you for, water, for the water of baptism, for your word that gives life. Breathe your spirit into all who are gathered here and into all creation. Satisfy all our thirst with your living water, Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Our first reading. Our mission statement here at Ascension Lutheran is inspired by 2,500-year-old Hebrew scripture. God's people were as confused then by world powers devouring people and resources as we are today. One prophet tried to raise his people's depth of awareness, recorded in Micah 6, 1-8. Hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear you, mountains, the controversy of the Lord, and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, 
and he will contend with Israel. O oh my Lord, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery, and I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh my people, remember now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam son of Beor answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings and calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you? but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. Holy Wisdom, Holy Word, thanks be to God. Our second reading, Who are God's Blessed Ones? Micah advocated kindness and justice. Generations later, St. Paul called Christians to be attentive, to care for those with needs other than their own, as written in 1 Corinthians 1, 18-31. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has, God, has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world 
did not know th God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not to reduce to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts, boast in the Lord. May the church hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. The Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So what kind of person do you see yourself as? Or better yet, what type of person do others see you as? I remember when Pastor Katrina first arrived, we had lunch together with council. Pastor Katrina wanted to get a sense of who we all were. So instead of having each of us introduce ourselves and saying something about me, she asked that the person next to us introduced us and tell her something about that person. My neighbor was Clementine. She said very kind things about me, hard worker, organized, always in the kitchen. However, Mary always has everything done so others don't have the opportunity to lend a hand. That really struck me. She hit the nail on the head. It was an eye opener for me to hear how someone else saw me and it made me aware that there are things about me that I can change for the better of situations. I may think I'm being organized and helpful, but am I taking the opportunity away from someone else to be involved? Sometimes it's very good to see your, 
self through the eyes of others. Does this change the thought of what kind of person you see yourself as? Do you see yourself as meek or maybe pure of heart? Or a peacemaker? Some are mourners. Well, others poor of spirit. How about merciful? Do you think you hunger for justice and thirst for righteousness? Do you think others see you that way? To understand the Beatitudes, we must understand what it is meant by these words, meek, merciful, poor of spirit, pure of heart, peacemaker, mourner, justice seeker. And as always, we need to understand when and why and to whom these words were written. Prior to the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus has been in the wilderness tested by the devil, according to the Gospel of Matthew. Following this time, Jesus ventures out teaching, preaching, and healing. During this time, many people became aware of Jesus' teachings, along with the authorities who did not take a liking to the perceived power Jesus had in his words and doings. Following the Beatitudes, Jesus goes on to teach about the character of those who follow his teachings. Statements like salt of the earth and the light in the world. Followers of Jesus gave flavor and light to life. Those who truly believed and followed were the blessing, not only to themselves, but to those who interacted with them. These followers, some disciples, most just ordinary people were searching for something. Paul Tillich, a theologian, said that people attach themselves to something that gives their life purpose and meaning. Viktor Frankl, a Holocaust survivor and psychiatrist, states in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, that people need three things to survive, a belief in a higher power, a sense of purpose, and someone to love. He wondered why he survived this time in camp when others perished. These followers in Jesus found that sense of purpose. They saw that Jesus' love for all, and Jesus offered the meaning of a belief in something bigger than the ruling government who oppressed them. Jesus offered hope. It was thought that not since Moses and his people had gathered at Mount Sinai were there such a large gathering as those who gathered to hear Jesus teach. Traveling from Nazareth to Capernaum, Jesus had created quite the stir among people. Many people were oppressed by the ruling power. Many suffered. There was much sickness, hunger, and poverty. People were looking for something. This Jesus spoke words of kindness and justice. He healed the sick and the lame. He created uncomfortableness for the government and tax collectors. He associated with fishermen and with women. He broke social norms to eat with the unclean. As with many teachers of the time, it was typical to sit and teach. Jesus sits and gathers his disciples around him and the many followers gathered around them. As he began naming those who are blessed, which according to the Google means made holy or consecrated, those who live with God, those blessed are the poor in spirit, those who may live in exile with little hope, those who have little power and must depend on others for survival. These people will have a place in heaven. What better hope is there than that? Those who mourn, you must love to mourn loss. While it could be argued, especially today, there is far much, too, too much love for things rather than for people and God. However, at this time of the gospel, statistically, there were many more people who had many less things to mourn the loss of. Most struggled for the basics of human need, but the loss of life was very prevalent. 
because of the struggle for those basic human needs. To love large is to mourn large. These too will be comforted. The meek, those with gentle spirit, self-control, free of malice. Meekness is said to be one of the fruits of the spirit. Meekness is not weakness. Jesus was described as meek and lowly. Moses was described as meek and humble. However, both had much power. Meek people do not exploit others or suppress others. Those who are not arrogant, self-righteous, or haughty, these will be welcomed. They will inherit the earth, but not in the way we think of today. At this time, one of the most important possessions was a place to be buried, a place for a tomb. This gave security. Those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, according to the World Health Organization, the five basic human needs are food, water, shelter, sleep, and clothing. When all have these basic needs, justice is served. When the earth is treated with respect and dignity, justice is served. When these rights are realized, those who hunger and thirst will be filled. The merciful, those who are compassionate, forgiving, kind, gracious, and are example for all to see and follow. These who would take off their coat and give it to another or food from their plate these who show this kindness of mercy will receive the same back. The pure of heart, as with mercifulness, living the word, walking the talk, not giving lip service to get ahead, but sharing acts of kindness and social justice to all. When you light up someone else's world and see that light in their eyes, you see God. The peacemakers have power, but the power to do good. Reconciliation, to restore right relationships. And what better in life is that than a right relationship with God? The full circle of life is when we have right relationships with each other, thus bringing God into the center of our lives. The persecuted for righteousness sake. We are fairly lucky where we live. We can believe what we want, pray what we want, meet as Christians where we want, as long as it's not upstairs in our sanctuary. We are not persecuted for our beliefs. However, many in the world are. When we stand up for what is right, when we do what is right for others, there is a risk of backlash. Think of why we were evicted from our downtown store. We treated everyone with respect and dignity, and those unwanted people created an uncomfortableness for our landlord. So what better way to fix the problem than to just get rid of us, thus eliminating the problem, or at least moving it further down Baker Street? These are the people of God. The Beatitudes are a roadmap for life for the people of God. My mother used to always say, no one is better than you. However, you are no one, no better than anyone else. As Paul says in Romans, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober justice, judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. When we live our lives with integrity, treating all with respect and dignity, when we live to try and have right relationships with others, we will be filled, we will be comforted, we will inherit the earth and receive righteous ju- righteousness and justice. This is the reward in heaven if we follow God's roadmap. May it be so. Please join me as we affirm our faith in the Trinity using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Called together to follow Jesus, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. With the words, merciful God, you are invited to respond. Receive our prayer. Cultivate humility in your church. In gatherings of every size, teach us to boast only in the cross. Shape your church to be people of kindness, generosity, and justice. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make foolish the wisdom of the world. Raise up honorable leaders who seek justice, love mercy, and pursue peace. Frustrate plans that are corrupt, wicked, and self-seeking. Prosper the work of peacemakers, especially those in the Ukraine, Iran, Sudan, and Myanmar. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Bless all, though, bless all whom the world rejects. Accompany those who are regarded as foolish, weak, low, and despised. Reveal your power and presence at work where it at least expected. Give your life, strength, and wisdom to all in need, especially Clementine, Marianne, and Kim, Terry, and all those who have lost loved ones. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remind us how your faithfulness brings us through difficulties and sustains us despite our weaknesses. Establish the cross as the center of our life together. Be with our sister church, Shepherd of the Valley Lutheran in Langley, and Reverend Kristen Steele, and the ministry of hospital chaplains in our synod, and our own Pastor Brenda. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Be with us as we live our mission as a community of Christians empowered by the grace of God through word and sacrament to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with God. We bring to you our needs and hopes, O God, trusting your wisdom and power revealed in Christ crucified. Amen. Please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Receive with believing hearts the blessing of the Lord. The God who faithfully brings forth justice and breaks the oppressor's rod, bless, strengthen, and uphold us today and always. Amen.